Good evening and welcome to the Manhattan City Commission meeting. Welcome to the new year, 2023. This is January 3rd, um, as, and we appreciate you coming. It's nice to have an audience, and even if Mark said half of them are related to him, <laughs> that's nice. We're glad you're here. Uh, so uh, I'll call upon the city clerk to uh, call the roll. Mayor Morse. Present. Commissioner Hassel. Present. Commissioner Reddy. Present. Commissioner Butler. Present. Commissioner Mata. Here. Mayor, we have five commissioners present. The quorum has been met. Thank you very much. And the next on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would join me. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible and liberty and justice for all. And now uh, we would have a proclamation. Suzanne Gleemore, if you'd come forward. And it says Kevin Bryant. Are you um, are you by yourself or do you have a substitute? Or <laughs> okay. You're welcome. Please come forward. Kevin, <laughs> we were re we were recruiting a, a substitute. Oh, no, Kevin. No recruiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, welcome. Okay, we have Suzanne Glimore. Glimore. I said okay, and Kevin Bryant are here uh, to receive the uh, proclamation for Martin Luther King holiday and uh, activities. So at this point, I will please. Oops. Scoot on over this way when you get a chance. <laughs> I'll, read, I'll read the proclamation. Whereas January 16th marks the observance of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Federal Holiday and Service Day, established by public law in 1983. And whereas this King Holiday, Holiday and Service Act highlights remembrance and celebration and encourages people everywhere to reflect on the principles of nonviolent social change, racial equality, community and humanitarian service and interracial cooperation. And Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. devoted his life to advancing equality, social justice and opportunity for all and challenged all Americans to participate in the never ending work of building a more perfect union and celebrating Dr. Mar Dr. King's life and spirit through community-wide recognitions and service on King Holiday is an appropriate way to honor Dr. King, bringing our citizens together and strengthening our communities and nation. And it is appropriate for the city of Manhattan, Kansas to support a community celebration in observance of the King Holiday and Day of Service honoring <coughs> Dr. Martin Luther King. And each of us can and must continue contribute to making our communities better with increased opportunity for all our citizens. Now, therefore, I, Linda Morris, Mayor of the City of Manhattan, Kansas, do hereby proclaim January 16th and 21st, and you'll have to explain, <laughs> two days, as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Community Celebration and Day of Service in Manhattan, and urge all people to join and pay tribute to our life to the life and works of Dr. Martin Luther King and apply his life principles and teachings of service to inspire others to serve and remember his spirit of community. Suzanne Gleemore and Kevin Bryant, I'll share this proclamation with you. And if you'd like to uh, say a few words, please. Thanks. Uh -huh. Thank you, yes, yeah. um, you Mayor Morris. Um, I'm Kevin Bryant, Manhattan Martin Luther King Committee, and um, proudly we bring um, our art writing contest, community celebration, spirit award, and our guest speaker, which will be uh, the new provost of K-State. Um, We're happy to bring this to Manhattan to show the diversity and, and community that we have here. Um, it's a fantastic community to be in. It's a, it's a, it's a community for a king. On the uh, 16th, we'll be doing that. We'll be at the Douglas Center with our uh, prayer breakfast community celebration. I invite you to come down. Saturday on the, on the 21st is the day of service. Hands-on K-State participates in, in different various functions, and you can still sign up for Hands-on hands K-State for you people listening out there. And then, of course, the laying of the wreath will occur at K-State on the 27th. 
Um, Lorenzo Lockett will be speaking, the guest speaker on that, so it'll be an interesting thing. And we look forward to celebrating this, in this fantastic community. Exactly. I'm going to stop dropping stuff anytime now. <laughs> uh, okay. The art and writing contest theme this year is, um, as always, uh, based on a quote from Dr. King. This year, that is, true peace is not merely the absence of tension, it is the presence of justice. That contest is still open for submissions until January 7th, so the community is invited to participate. Children, youth, adults, anyone can participate, and you can drop off your entries at the Manhattan Public Library until January 7th at 6 p.m., which is when they close. So we invite you all. Thank you. Thank you. I would just say that this community has a long history of uh, recognizing uh, Martin Luther King in this community, I don't know, 30 years anyway. And I would note that um, Jim Butler, Reverend Jim Butler, passed away this last year, and so this will be the first year that he has not been a part of the organizing committee. Spencer. Pardon? Spencer. Uh, what did I say? Oh, sorry. Reverend Jim Spencer. <laughs> I know that. I'm sorry. I just grabbed the wrong name. So, um, but I, I do want to mention Jim Spencer because he was uh, kind of the glue that held things together. So, <laughs> and uh, we appreciated his efforts, a lifetime, actually, his whole life. So, thank you all. All right. The next uh, uh, category on the agenda is public comments. If anyone has comments, then please come forward. If you'd like to pay tribute to your dad. <laughs> uh, anyone? Seeing no one, I'll move on past public comments to commissioner comments. No? You just one want to give a shout out to Whoville, you know, for the Festival of Lights. They did a great job. Of course, those are coming down, which, which is sad, but they'll be back up next year and uh, remember that's uh, not sponsored by the city so they take donations so feel free this year to donate to Festival of Lights so it will continue. Yes I just wanted to wish everybody a happy new year hopefully it's off to a great start um, even though we didn't do so great in the Sugar Bowl there's lots of basketball games to go to as well and USD 383 starts tomorrow thank you. Mm -hmm. I would just say that this community has done an excellent job with the holiday events that we've had from, from the Blue Earth Plaza to the uh, lighted holiday parade and all of the events in the community. I think the Santa Clauses were just wonderful <laughs> and uh, hope we get them back. Uh, I might also mention um, I've been serving on the law board, Riley County Law Board, and we have um, just uh, sworn in last Friday the new director of our CPD and uh, uh, his name is Brian Pete and that was his first day and he's been very busy with the new job since he's arrived here um, and uh, we hope to have a, a welcome reception for him soon. Uh, I, I did take the opportunity to tour the Wolf House uh, the historic holiday uh, decorations there were just wonderful. It's a, 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 a real uh, gem here in the community, so you might uh, go there sometime when there's an open house about what life was like in the 1860s, 70s, or 80s, and uh, it's pretty, pretty remarkable. And uh, I also went to, the re these are just recent things, to the Flint Hills Discovery Center um, it was like a pajama party for New Year's, and they dropped balloons from the ceiling, and, and there were a lot of squealing kids. There were 220 people registered, although I think two-thirds of those are parents, <laughs> that they have a you know, maximum the building can hold. But it was just delightful to see uh, the children doing something in the community that uh, was, it was a pizza party too. So kudos to the Flint Hills Discovery Center for, and I know the zoo has been doing some special programming too. So uh, they've done an excellent job. 
Okay. Uh, with that, it is now time for ta -da, the reorganization. <laughs> so um, it, I would just like to make some uh, comments uh, here uh, on my way uh, departing the mayor position. And I think we've, we've had some real successes and uh, uh, certainly the word infrastructure would describe a lot of them. We have uh, worked on the water treatment plant, the water plant, <laughs> the sewer, the streets, everything. And uh, that's going to pay off. It's, a, a, you know, it, it's like at your house. Should I do this maintenance? It will pay off later. And I had my sewers lined, <laughs> Rob, <laughs> early uh, a year ago, and uh, so and, and I really think that we don't we have not had the kind of uh, I mentioned on the radio this morning the kind number of of uh, water breaks that Topeka had. I heard on the radio there were 125 during that severe winter, severe cold we had, and uh, I confirmed with Ron that we had one. <laughs> At Christmas Day. On Christmas Day, we had one. We may have had two or three, but for the most part, it was uh, the the uh, the work we have been doing in this community is really paying off. So I hope everyone, you know, you don't notice the absence of something. If we had 50 of them, people would be screaming bloody murder because their water'd be off and sewer and all that. So the fact that life is normal and usual is a, a really good thing. Um, we have continued to chip away at the city's uh, commitment to the North Campus Corridor. That commitment was made uh, over nine, I've been on the commission now about eight years, and that, was all, that com commitment had already been made when I uh, joined the commission. So we have continued to deliver on that. And you know, it comes out of our hide sometimes because we don't have money to do other things that we'd like to, but it, a commitment is a commitment, and we have been good uh, partners with Kansas State University, and uh, we're going to help them get their enrollment up <laughs> so we can enjoy these wonderful streets and sewers that we're building. Um, it's um, uh, some of the highlights, um, we've, we're putting in a new data and uh, technology system, an ERP, uh, to replace the one we have, and we're using $3 million of ARPA money for that, but it's still going to be a major investment over a couple of years of our staff time. Those are, that's the heart of all the computer systems for the city, and it's going to be a, a big deal, and it's going to require a lot of effort. Um, we're f we've approved the Art and Light Museum. We are dredging Dishman Lake. I mean, look at the people that go there that, uh, for, uh, that, that will really be able to fish. <laughs> it won't be clogged anymore. We've approved the city's commitment to the Scorpion Project and um, IRBs and all the economic development things that we need to do there. We've approved the Midtown Development for Aggieville. Um, I won't talk about parking lots, but <laughs> uh, we have, um, we're improving sidewalks on Fort Riley Boulevard and on Hayes Drive, and there are others throughout this whole year and coming up next year that are major. Um, and um, uh, the, the new parking garage just opened a few months ago, and uh, in Aggieville, and with and now we have license plate readers. We're just really modern. Um, we accepted the FAA's contribution of about $25 million to reconstruct the runways. Is reconstruct the right word, Brandon? <laughs> okay. Um, that, that's going to be major for us, and it'll serve us well for another 20 years. Uh, we've completed the first year of the Manhattan Development Code, and uh, we're tweaking it, it seems. We've tweaked it twice or three times already, and I, I, we had a commitment to take a look at it again in one year, so that, that year's up, so it's time. Uh, we authorized a FEMA buyout of the uh, National Church Residences on Garden Way, and those are so important to keep people out of harm's way every time we can buy out a uh, 
uh, and use FEMA for 80% of the, of the cost. We approved a pre-development pre agreement with the Manhattan Housing Authority. Uh, we adopted a new housing market analysis and now we need to follow through to implement it. Uh, we've established a policy, and this was major, it's taken some years to develop a fee in lieu of stormwater fee and we have just approved new chamber con uh, contracts and we're redeveloping the levy system, reconstructing the levy system. And those are huge projects. Um, I, and I just wanted to call attention to those uh, highlights. Uh, they are all pretty much big ticket items that have consumed our attention, our staff's attention. Our staff does an excellent job, uh, resource-wise, administration does a great job of finding uh, grants and uh, <clears throat> the FAA, 25 million. I mean, think about the things that we've, uh, we're accomplishing here all to make our community better. Uh, as I address, go to, uh, con uh, to address, welcome a conference here in the community, I, I usually say that Manhattan is one of the, is the shining star on the Kansas map. And um, I, I really think it is. We're doing things here that other communities are suffering and declining in population. We are uh, steady and growing slightly, and that's a good way to grow rather than having a huge bulge of, of some kind. Um, if I, I would have liked to have completed uh, or to have uh, worked on the annexation of Green Valley along the commercial corridor, I think that's important to our future growth, and we can't just put our heads in the sand. That's what's happened in Green Valley, is head in the sand and not dealing with the, uh, the issues there. Um, I would also, um, I'm incur I would encourage us to review and update old policies because they tend to get in the, the old ones get in the way of the things that we need to be doing. And I know everybody wants to look the other way and, and avoid, uh, but uh, we've seen how some of them are so disruptive uh, when we don't take action. Uh, so with that, I, I think our community is healthy. I think that we are in better shape than many communities are in many cities. And I, I want us to continue to grow and help. And I, we are so fortunate to have Fort Riley and K-State here and NBAF. So, and now in future to have Scorpion. And so those are exciting things for our community and we, we can't take them for granted and we have to keep uh, blowing oxygen <laughs> to all of these things to make our community better and attract people. I'm uh, uh, amazed at the senior citizens that moved. They've gone to school here or, but, uh, and they come back after they retire. They come to Manhattan and the young uh, professionals who went away, got a job, and want to come back here. That's what we want to have. That dynamic is what we need here in this community, and we're doing that. So it, it is uh, uh, all good. So just uh, uh, please continue to what, have patience with our street <laughs> <laughs> repairs and rebuilds. Uh, I'm um, pleased that we can uh, tear up a block, but the businesses around it can, can, can continue to survive and make it through that short period of time, and then we'll go to the next block. But we don't tear up the whole street and put a lot of businesses out, out of business for that uh, period of time. So I think our staff, our administration, has... Uh, a good system and uh, that we can uh, appreciate. And so with that, I will move on to the, uh, I, uh, <clears throat> my comments are ending. <laughs> and it, Brenda, uh, the city clerk, has um, a plan for us. I would like to ask the commission for nominations for mayor. I move that Commissioner Mark Hattasall Mark J. Hattasaw be appointed to serve as mayor until the first working Tuesday of January 2024. Is there a second? I'll second. 
Hearing no other <coughs> nominations for mayor, I will now call the roll. Mayor Morris? Yes. Commissioner Hassel? Yes. Commissioner Reddy? Yes. Commissioner Butler? Yes. Commissioner Mata? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. I would uh, like to ask the commission for nominations for mayor pro tem. Okay, I move that Commissioner Usha Reddy be appointed to serve as mayor pro tem until the first working Tuesday of January 2024. Is there a second? S second. Hearing no other nominations for mayor pro tem, city clerk, would you please call the roll? Mayor Hassel? Yes. Commissioner Reddy? Yes. Mayor Commissioner Butler? Yes. Commissioner Mata? Yes. Commissioner Morse? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Oh. Down for a presentation. Yes, I will. Well, first of all, I would like to thank my wife, Pamela, and my daughters, Jessica and Georgia, for being here tonight. Also, my brother, David, and his wife, Julie, for spending part of their evening with us. I really appreciate the support and encouragement that you guys have all provided me over the last three years on the commission. I've always felt that being mayor of Manhattan was a real honor and privilege. People across the state of Kansas love coming to Manhattan and enjoying the great things that are happening here. As I visit with people across the state, I'm thrilled with the opportunity to share with them all of the things that we are doing here to make Manhattan an even better place to live, work, and visit. I don't have any particular agenda for the next year other than my usual soapboxes of uh, less regulation and interference by the government in our lives and livelihoods, our continuing attempts to provide services that citizens expect in an affordable way, and hopefully the continuous uh, streamlining and shortening of city commission meetings. <laughs> Um, having said that, uh, the top items I would like to see us work on and hopefully accomplish this year include 
getting our head around and developing some action steps on this workforce housing issue. I know we won't have any money to implement anything for a while, but with the steering committee in place, I would like to see some tangible progress this year, including some bright ideas for the commission to consider. Secondly, we need to start discussing a plan to allocate our extra 2.6 million in ARPA funds. Our budget discussions this year should include some firm possible uses, and I'd like to have it settled by the end of the year. I would also like to see us make some progress on the office space on the first floor of the Aggieville parking garage. Since it doesn't appear we're gonna get state grants to finish that space, uh, we need to come up with some ideas on how to fund, use, and manage that prime piece of real estate. I am concerned that the community is still suspicious of our plans for the Parks and Recreation Department. We need to communicate more and better as to what the city is doing to provide expected Parks and Recreation services and programs. We need to get a director hired and going as soon as possible. Getting the pools open last year was much appreciated by the public, but I'm afraid we still have a ways to go to re-earn the public's trust in this area. As we have seen over the past few years, the updating and improving of our community is expensive and inconvenient. Between the closures and detours of Kimball Avenue and the ongoing construction in and around Aggieville, these improvements can really try our collective patience. If you're hoping to an end, for an end to these hassles, I'm afraid this is not your year. We are looking at more and better inconvenience in Aggieville, total closure for a few months of the airport, continued linear trail closures on the levee, and don't forget the regularly scheduled orange cone zones that come with our annual road maintenance projects. But still, these are exciting times here in MHK. In the next 18 to 24 months, we will add a world-class museum, a state-of-the-art vaccine and drug manufacturing facility, probably two beautiful and top-shelf Class A office buildings, an updated and improved airport experience, much improved levee protection and stormwater management infrastructure, a great new maintenance building for city equipment and employees to work from, and soon, the long-awaited commissioning and opening of the National Bio and Agri Defense Facility. It truly is a great time to be alive in Manhattan, Kansas. Thank you again for this honor. We will, is there any reason to pause for any reason? We're just gonna keep moving and knock this stuff out quick if you guys can hang on a minute. Um, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda are those of a routine and housekeeping nature or those items which have been previously considered by the City Commission and may be approved in one motion. A commissioner may request an item be removed for separate discussion and considered immediately following the consent agenda. Comments from the public related to these items uh, is allowed. Each person will be limited to one speaking opportunity for up to five minutes. Commissioners, are, do you have any questions about any items on the consent agenda? Uh. Yes, item E1 on the request for proposal for the Arts in the Park concerts. The, um, in the memo, it gives how much we spent for those um, events that we put on for 2019 2022. They said over the same time period, received 24,000 in sponsorships and donations. Was that 24,000 for like those number of years? Cumulative? I, th I believe that's correct. Okay. Also, in the proposal, the last page says uh, optional possible sharing of vendors and sponsors' um, monies. I would hope that, you know, if we do this, we get a good proposal where it incentivizes them to go out and get th it those, but either we get a percentage of that or the money goes into better events that we put on because when we did mark mentioned parks and rec when we did those meetings we heard from people in the community the willingness to to sponsor and i just don't want to sponsor to give a vendor more money i want to make sure we've got something like that i think we've got a, a unique opportunity to to look at some talent within the community who might be able to program plan and lock in uh, those musicians and those um, groups that may come and perform in our in our park during the summer. One of the relationships that we do have 
with existing vendors as our concessionaires. We do get a percentage from them every year when they operate within our facilities. We don't know just exactly who is gonna be interested in this, but we do foresee that relationship and we want that ability, as you mentioned, to create incentive for them to go out, generate those sponsorships, and then ultimately potentially share in those sponsorships. Um, we're fairly optimistic about where this is headed. And in, we've had other conversations about other services going there too. And I, I know Commissioner Butler has mentioned it before as well in terms of looking other ways to, to generate revenue uh, through billboards and signage. There are other opportunities that we're, we're exploring and we'll be bringing back to you all as well. So, okay, good, glad to hear. Any other <coughs> commissioners uh, comments or questions? All right, uh, is anybody in the public care to weigh in on any uh, of the items on the consent agenda tonight? All right, seeing none, I would um, close public comment. Is there a motion? Mayor, I move we approve the consent agenda. I'll there. second. All right, there's a uh, motion and a second. City Clerk. Commissioner Reddy? Yes. Commissioner Butler? Yes. Commissioner Mata? Yes. Commissioner Morse? Yes. Mayor Hassel? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. All righty, we will move on to our one item, on the, which is a public hearing, considering vacating a portion of a public utility easement located on lot three, interlocking addition 2905 Palmer Circle. Ben. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. I will make this as quick as possible. Understand the new marching orders. Um, <laughs> Maybe I can use some technology. Okay, like you said, Mayor, uh, before you, you have a request to vacate a utility easement. Um, the background on this particular utility easement is that when the, um, this utility easement was included in the final plat for the interlocking uh, addition, um, I know this is a lot to look at, you'll get a better uh, exhibit moving forward, but basically the way this uh, easement is running, it, it bisects the um, one-third almost of the east uh, correction west boundary of the lot um, the current owners are requesting the vacation of this uh, easement so that they can put a pool in their yard um, here's a better exhibit so as you can see this line right here is the uh, easement and it falls like such they are requesting to basically vacate this area here uh, with it uh, there's nothing here uh, there is a line that runs along sanitary sewer line that runs along the property lines, but this is well outside of any area uh, that we're concerned about. Uh, no utilities are current in the right way, as I said. All, utility, all utilities have responded to the request and all support this vacation. Very good. Any questions for Ben? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's nobody here for the applicant to speak. Uh, Apparently, so right. we'll throw open the public hearing. Uh, members of the public, nobody signed up for it, but if anybody would like to comment or have a concern about this utility vacation, um, please come forward. If not, I will close the public hearing. Um, any other questions for city staff, commissioners? If not, will they be ready for a motion? Okay, move that we find that no private rights will be injured or endangered by such vacation, that the public will suffer no loss of inconvenience thereby, and approve first reading of an ordinance vacating a portion of a utility easement located at Lot 3, Interlock and Addition, also known as 2905 Palmer Circle, Manhattan, Riley County, Kansas, 2205. Second. All right, there's a Commissioner Butler made a motion, and Commissioner Reddy seconded it. City Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Butler? Yes. Commissioner Mata? Yes. Commissioner Morse? Yes. Mayor Hassel? Yes. Commissioner Reddy? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. All right. Um, that is ex the uh, extent of our agenda for this evening. Is there a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. Second. There's been a motion to adjourn. Please call the roll. Commissioner Mata? Yes. Commissioner Morse? Yes. Mayor Hessel? Yes. Commissioner Reddy? Yes. Commissioner Butler? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. At uh, six. 635. Okay, 635. <laughs> this meeting is adjourned.